It took a Richmond judge less than 25 minutes to grant Nika Rivera a bond. The victim's family tells me outside of the courthouse that they are fighting for justice. Whatever happened, uh, it's an irreversible act, and he, you know, our son's not coming back. Jeff and Renee Baldwin share their grief Tuesday morning outside of the John Marshall Courthouse, moments after their son's alleged killer appeared before a judge. People have to have consequences for their actions. In court, we found out Jacob Baldwin and the suspect randomly met at Scott's Edition in the early morning hours of Saturday, October 12th. The Commonwealth's attorney played videos captured on a stranger's cell phone of the altercation. They say their first encounter happened when Jacob tried to get into a group photo Rivera was in with his friends. When it appeared tensions dissipated, prosecutors say an enraged Rivera attempted to fight Baldwin despite a friend holding him back. They allege Rivera physically walked around someone to punch Baldwin in the eye. The victim fell back and hit his head. Baldwin would die five days later in the hospital. He's worked in the restaurant business forever and is one that breaks up fights. That's the reason Jacob had nothing wrong with his hands. Jacob didn't touch that guy. During the bond hearing, dozens of Rivera's friends and family stood in his support. His defense attorney handed the judge 50 letters of support urging him to grant Rivera a bond. The judge said he could mitigate any danger to society by demanding Rivera have a curfew, GPS monitoring, and a $15,000 bond. The suspect's family refused to comment. I'm not going to get to dance with my son at his wedding. I'm not going to have grandchildren. It's so we could basically ruin my life too. So, Rivera will be in front of a judge again on December 5th for a preliminary hearing. In Richmond, I'm Brendan King, CBS 6 News.